Good morning, everyone. Leah Dixon here from Port Coquitlam, British Columbia. I am super excited to be here this morning um, for my regular weekly card class to go. So every Wednesday morning, I go live. Um, I create three cards for you. And then for the week, you have an opportunity to um, get the make and take kits for these cards using um, my host code. So a $60 order gets you um, enough materials to make two of each of the cards that I create today. And a $70 or more order will also get you the embellishments to use for today's cards. So I am going to switch over to my desktop and get started showing you the set that we are using this week. As you pop on, if you want to say hi, I love to know who's here and um, joining me and watching. So um, yeah. All right, here we go. So this is the Hey Chuck um, stamp set. And so in the past, if you've used Stampin' Up! products before, you may have known about the Hey Chick and um, Hey Birthday Chick. Oh, good morning. Thanks for joining. And so now we have Hey Chuck. Um, instead of the hens, we've got all these roosters um, and they have some personality, let me tell you. Um, super cute. And then to go along with them, we have our coordinating dies. The dies cut out all of the images skateboard fence cake all the all the roosters and then we have some extra bits like sunshine and the weather vane um to kind of go along with that so we're going to have some fun with these guys and i am using our in colors today so again if you are familiar with stampin up you'll know that every year we bring in five fresh colors and take away five colors um we always know which ones are going they're they're um, dated. So these ones are our 2023 to 2025 in color. So we know in May of 2025, we will say goodbye to these ones. So we've got our Moody Moth, Pebbled Path, Copper Clay, Boho Blue, and Wild Wheat. And together they are honestly the perfect colors for any farm cards, <laughs> which these are today. Um, so our first card, I actually am tempted to use it as a grad card. Um, you've got something to crow about. Um, you know, angry teens and grad, it's just, I don't know, I kind of thought it was funny. Um, so this is our card. And um, so when you get your kit, um, my pack here only has enough to make one, but your kit will have enough to make two of this card. So you're going to get your basic white card base, your envelope a piece of boho blue cardstock that has been die cut already using the radiating stitches die. So these are the other dies that I'm using in this kit, but anything that uses these um, will be pre-cut for you. Um, these are what we call an online exclusive. You won't find these in our catalog, um, but it's three borders, two circles and a heart, all with that stitching on them. And so any pieces that we use from this die set will be die cut for you. Um, yeah, so we have our boho blue and our radiating stitches. And then we have a basic white layer um, that also has the radiating stitches on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually stamp our sentiment on this small white piece. And I want to stamp it quite low on our card because I need enough space to add my crazy rooster leg. So I'm using the sentiment, you've got something to crow about. And I mean, honestly, you could make this into any kind of card because you could, um, you could put happy birthday inside or, you know, whatever, like everybody's got something to crow about, right? so we've got that and now I can put that away and the next thing I'm going to do before I glue this all together is I am going to um, put some blue on my background using um, a blending brush now I am going to use boho blue ink and I do have it listed as a recommended supply 
However, if you do not have these ink colors yet, um, any blue is going to do. Grab your balmy blue. That's a nice one that we've had for quite some time because all we're doing is a nice little circle in the background to kind of give like a blue sky to our background. And you can do this as light or as dark as you'd like. And it's just to add some interest to the background. Okay. Mine was pretty uneven there. I'm also not concerned about that because most of this is going to get covered with our image. So boho blue is not really a big concern. Um, just have a nice blue background for your sky. All right. So um, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually get some of these pieces out of the way by gluing all of our layers together. Now you can use the adhesive of your choice. Um, for me, my choice is always to use liquid glue. I'm just gonna, there we go. All right, so um, when I use my liquid glue, good morning. When I use my liquid glue, I always use the wide end of my liquid glue. And for these ones with those radiating stitches, I try to stay away from the stitch. So I've just put a tiny drop of glue on there and then I'm kind of using, like I'm not actually applying more glue, I'm just spreading the glue that's there using that wider tip. And I'm going to pop this right in. It's quite nice because it kind of, it gives you the frame, like you can see exactly where to put this. Okay. And then I'm going to glue this one down. And again, I'm avoiding the stitching area. I'm not putting my adhesive right out to the edges. I'm staying inside the stitching. Um, if you're the type of person who really wants those corners down, then I would suggest using a dry adhesive like tear and tape or seal and applying it that way. Um, you just don't want anything that's going to leak through. Okay. So we've got that on the front of our card. And now we're ready to have some fun with the roosters. So you've got a little piece of basic white cardstock in your kit. And that is where we are going to stamp our rooster and our fence. Uh, so let's grab our, our memento black ink again. And we want that crazy one. There we go. It's kind of screaming at us. So ink him up. And I'm just double checking that I've got ink everywhere. And I'm going to pop him on there. Okay. Then I'm going to grab my fence and I'm just going to turn my paper sideways so that I have enough space to put my fence on here as well. So those are my two images that are going to get colored and die cut now. So I am using the in colors, as I mentioned, to color all of these things in. But if you don't have the in colors, don't let that hold you back. You want a brown for the fence. You want a grayish color for his body. You want a bluish color for his feathers, a yellowish color for his beak, and a reddish color for his tongue. Like, don't be um, bound by these colors. Okay, so I am going to start with my fence, and I'm going to use copper clay for my fence. Um, pecan pie is another one of our new colors that would be beautiful for this, or any of our browns. Um, make the fence as dark or as light as you'd like. So I'm taking my light first and this is really fast coloring. You just start at the top and swipe down because we want our bottom. It's not going to be perfectly cut out. So we want our bottom to have kind of a loose end. And same when we come in here, do those sides, we start, well, the middle ones we just color, but for these end ones, we start in at the line and just brush out and let it be a loose end to that. Okay, now I'm gonna take the thin end of my dark copper clay and accent all the spots that they've already accented. Okay, just like that. So that's all there is to our fence, is just a little bit of brown. Okay, with that done, we're gonna focus on our little rooster now. And I'm actually going to start with his body with my pebbled path. Um, now you could use 
any colors you want here, but I am starting with my light pebbled path, so it's kind of a grayish brown. And we're going to color his body and his head, but not his tail feathers or those feathers on top of his head. Okay, and give his tops of his legs a little go as well. All right, so we've got his body colored. Now we're going to go back in and do a little bit of accenting on him. There's just a few spots that they've already put little lines. We're going to make sure that those get accentuated. Okay, moving along there. All right, so just a little accent on him. Okie dokie. So let's see. What's next? Um, we've got, let's do our wild wheat. Um, so I'm taking my light wild wheat and doing the outside of his beak and his legs. There we go. And then I'm going to use my dark wild wheat with a thin tip and do the inside of his mouth just to make it look like you know it's, it's shadowed in there it's dark all right and then finally we're going to grab our boho blue i'm going to use the wide light end and just color his head feathers and his tail feathers so you can choose any colors you want just because this one has the boho blue um, background on it, I wanted the boho blue for his feathers. But you go ahead and make this any kind of rooster you'd like. Okay, and then using the thin tip dark boho blue, we're just going to do some accents. Okay, and just a little bit like that. All right, so we've got his feathers all done. And now our last little thing is his tongue. We could use the Moody Mauve for his tongue, but I'm actually going to bring in one of our 2022 to 2024 in colors and just use my light sweet sorbet for his tongue. <laughs> just a little wild. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring this in and give you guys a really good view of him. So he's a little grouchy. Um, <laughs> I love them. Okay, so with those things done, we are going to grab our mini machine and our dies, and we are going to die cut both of these pieces. And I do love that there are dies for both of them. Now, if you don't have the dies, um, this is a set. Uh oh, I put my dies down somewhere, and I don't see them at all. Oh, they're there. Um, this is a set that you could very easily fussy cut. Um, oh, hello. Thanks for joining Honeybee Stampin' Hive. Um, we are just working with the Hey Chuck, uh, stamp set. So I don't know if you're familiar with the retired Hey Chick, but now we've got Hey Chuck. Um, we're just done some in color coloring and now we're going to do some die cutting. But um, I was just saying, if you don't have these dies, these guys are not impossible to fussy cut. So go ahead and fussy cut them. And yeah, it's, uh, oops. All the pieces that, um, that you need for these cards that um, don't have a coordinating stamp, um, you get pre-cut in your kit. So like the sun and everything, you're going to get pre-cut. It's just the ones that have to be stamped before being die cut that um, you won't get the die cuts for. So no worries. You can always fussy cut them. Um, or you can grab the bundle and you'll have the dice. Okay, so there we go. Got those guys die cut. Pop them off to the sides. These guys back there. All right. And now this card finishes off so quickly. We're going to bring back our background that we began with. Um, I'm going to put dimensionals on the backs of 
um, I guess his name's Chuck. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to do one on his head, one on his body, one on his tail. And for our fence, I'm just going to do one on the left, one on the right. Okay. Now, before I peel those backings off, though, I'm going to put that down and just make sure that he's going to fit on my card where I want him. All right. And then you have your die cut wild wheat sun. So this guy gets a little bit of glue on the back of him. Um, remember that we have not put anything. Oh, sorry. Wrong end. Um, I haven't put anything down. Like I haven't taken any of these backings off yet. So a little dab of glue. You really don't need a bunch to hold this in place. Okay, here we go. So I've got a little dab of glue on there. I want my sun to sit right along the top of my fence. So now that I've seen where that is, I'm going to move everything and glue my sun down. And then I'm going to take the backings off my fence. Pop that onto my card front. And then take the backings off of Chuck and let him stand on the center post. So I'm just gonna line his foot up with the center post. And voila. Okay, so we are nearly done. We just need to embellish this now. And of course, if we are working with, uh oh, where did I put them? Oh, they're there. If we're working with in colors, what else would we use to embellish other than the 2023-2025 in color dots? Um, these guys are awesome. So now, I don't use my take your pick tool when I'm working with these ones. I actually use my finger because I want to almost like slide it sideways before I try to lift. Um, that way I make sure that I don't accidentally take the color backing off of these because that's how these get their color is there's like a metallic color backing that's adhesive that's on the on the sheet and then the bubble is over top the bubble is not colored the bubble is clear over top of the metallic color so you don't want to accidentally um put a tool in there and pull them apart um oh i'm so glad you like this one yeah these guys, I mean, Hey Chick was a favorite of mine. And now that we've got Hey Chuck, I had to do it. Um, so much fun. So there is my first Hey Chuck card, um, all in those awesome in colors. All right. Um, and then, of course, you can decorate your envelope if you want to. Um, put a little screaming Chuck head or something on there. I don't know. Um all right, I'm going to move those dots off to the sides, and we're going to bring in our second card. This one is a birthday card using the copper clay. So in your kit, these are all the pieces you'll have. Um, and again, everything except for the... Um, well, actually, on this one, there's nothing that gets die cut. We we're just stamping right on the circle. So um, on the last card, everything that's pre able to be pre-cut is pre-cut. It's just your, um, your fence and your rooster that you have to cut yourself. All right. Yeah, I don't know what it is about those dots. Um, I've known it for years because um, they've had these in other colors, and it's just kind of interesting about them. But uh, now that I know the trick and don't try and pry them up, because then you might accidentally pry them apart, um, it's all good. I've never had a problem since then. So I don't know if they fixed the problem or if I've just gotten better at doing it. Um, all right, so I'm just going to tap my screen to make sure I don't go to sleep. I did figure out what was going on with my new phone. And the problem is, is that it has a 10 minute timer and um, the screen turns off after 10 minutes. <laughs> Not very handy when you're filming. All right. So in this kit, you've got a piece of 
um, embossed basic white and this one is bossed, embossed with one of the dies, one of the three, or I guess not, or not dies, one of the three embossing folders in the Basics 3D embossing folders. Again, this is an online exclusive product and one of my favorites. I actually have here one of the other patterns. Um, it's these crazy big dots, like they're really deep. Um, and then there's also a little rosettes pattern. Um, and these are full size dies. Um, they're not the, the itty bitties. All right, so before we glue this down, we are going to attach our DSP. And so this is the In Colors DSP. You get four sheets um, of each of the colors in each of the patterns. Let's see, do I even have it right beside me? I did, here we go. So it's quite a big sheet. You get 40, um, 40 pieces of paper in total. And um, so you get all the different patterns in the five different colors. So we've got hearts and dashes, polka dots and stripes. Um, so really fun, versatile paper. Right. So we're going to glue this right to the edge of our embossed piece of basic white. Um, so again, I am going to use glue, liquid glue, um, but you do you and use what works for you. So, and I just, along the edges, really thin layer. We don't need a lot of glue. Um, in some spots it almost, like you almost can't see the glue, it's so thin. Um, but it holds really, really well. Okay. Holds really, really well once you press it down. So that gives me an opportunity to tap my ends, make sure I'm lined up, and then press it down. Okay, there we go. Now, before I glue this down, um, if I wanted to, I could come in. Actually, I think I do because that's a little bit of a significant amount. You can use a paper trimmer or your scissors, and I'm just taking off the excess DSP that I have here. So if you flip it upside down, you can see what's hanging over the edges. And if you've got the opposite problem that your DSP isn't hanging off the edges, but you've got a white border on the front, then just grab a paper trimmer and trim that up so that um, it's perfectly square. All right, so with that done, I'm going to take a piece here of Baker's Twine. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure this is gray granite. Um, the Baker's Twine Essentials Pack uh, looks like this. You get uh, crumb cake, white, vanilla, black, and I'm pretty sure it's Sahara Sand. It doesn't say on here. It would say in the catalog. Um, but the grayish one um, is what we're going to use for this card. And so I'm going to take enough that I'm going to be able to tie a bow with it. And I'm just going to put my thumb on top of it right there near the top. Then I'm going to wrap this twine around twice before I get back to that same spot. And I'm going to wrap this around both layers. So it's pinching them together and I'm going to make a knot. Once I have my knot, then I can start to fiddle with this, put it where I want it. Um, I don't need to worry about tying my bow yet. It's just a knot to get everything in place. Then I can make sure that this twine, I want it kind of one over top of the DSP side, one over top of the white side. Um, I want that bow up a little bit higher. Okay, so we can really fiddle with it. And once we're happy with that placement, then we can take the time to tie our bow. Okay, so to do that, I am going to make two bunny ears, wrap them around each other. Some of you might find this easier to do after you've glued this layer to your card front, because then it won't keep lifting up on you. Um, and then we just fiddle with it. Those are just one of those things. You just keep working them until they work for you. <laughs> it's a few little tips and tricks, but mostly it's just patience. 
and fiddling. Okay, so I've got that bow exactly where I want it. Now afterwards I might, we'll see how it works out, I might use a mini glue dot to hold that in place and I might trim up those ends, but for now I'm leaving them and we're just going to glue this whole piece to our copper clay card base. So again, super small dot of glue, drag it with the flat end of your glue stick or glue bottle, it's not a glue stick. All right, and then we can just lift up any excess, wipe it off in the center and glue this to our card front. So you do want the DSP edge over by the fold of your card. There we go. All right. So we've got that done. Now we do have another big piece of basic white. That one's just getting glued straight to the inside of our card. That. Okay. So just like that, glued into our card. And now we're ready to do a little bit of decorating on our front here. Um, let's see here. We've got, I'm just going to put away this glue for a moment. We've got a stylish shapes circle and so this one has the stitching on the end on the edges in pebbled path and then we have another circle this is the two and three eighths inch punch that coordinates with the circled same stamp set and that's going to layer on just beautifully like that but we're going to stamp it first you know just in case uh, <laughs> You never know what might happen. So just in case we mess up our stamping, we'll stamp it first. So I want the cute little guy who is leaning down, kind of being coy. I've pretended that he's trying to eat cake. So I've stamped him on my circle. And then I grabbed a little cake and stamped it right beside him. There we go. All right. That went well. Yay. No reduce. Okay. <laughs> so with him stamped right there, we're going to give him some color. Now I'm going to color him slightly differently. Instead of a pebbled path body, I am going to give him a copper clay body this time. So just like I did with the pebbled path, I'm going to start with my light paintbrush end. And oops, there we go. And I'm going to come in here and color his head and his body, the legs. But I'm avoiding the um, the head feathers. Avoiding those. We're going to let those be blue or whatever color you choose. Okay. I need to concentrate. <laughs> you think when I did this the first time, I colored the head feathers first? I think that might be easier so that you can see what you should and shouldn't be coloring. Okay, there we go. We got his body done. So, body is colored. And then I'm going to use the dark to go in and accent some things. Awesome. Then I'll use my light uh, wild wheat to do his beak and his legs. And the candle. There we go. All right, we're going to grab that little piece of light sweet sorbet again there we go and then finally we're going to do all of his cake and his plumage in light boho blue so i'm going to do the top of the cake in light boho blue 
um, I'm going to use the skinny end to color the candle and the loop de loos on his cake. There we go. And then his plumage, all with that paintbrush tip of the light boho blue. And so this is just quick brush strokes to fill in the plumage. You don't want to use too much, otherwise it starts to bleed outside of the lines, because these are alcohol-based markers. Okay, and then we'll use the fine tip of our boho blue to come in and add any accents on here. There we go. All right, just like that, we are done. So there he is all colored, he's so cute. Okay, now this just gets glued to our circle and then our circle gets put on with dimensionals. Um, that way it goes over top of that time and we don't see kind of a lump in our card. All right, so a little dot, spread it around. and glue that on. This one is a fairly fine border, so having that liquid glue so that we can move it around if we need is kind of a nice thing. Okay. Now I've got my dimensionals, and I want to kind of put them on in a square pattern so that I end up with two on one side of my twine and two on the other side of my twine. Often with a circle, I would just do three, but this time I don't want one accidentally ending up on my twine. And so then I'm gonna bring those bows up out of the way. There we go. I'm trying to make sure that his feet and his cake end up like kind of flattish, like he's standing on ground. And then um, we need to stamp our sentiment. So we've got this tiny little piece of wild wheat um, cardstock and We've got our little happy birthday that we're going to stamp onto there. So, ink that up. Stamp that on there. And then we're going to attach that with a tiny dot of glue and a tiny dimensional. So, this is going to go on just like that. So, down on this end, we're going to put a dimensional. Um, actually, you know what? Let's not do glue. Let's just do one dimensional and then I'll show you a little trick for the other dimensional. So we're going to place this where we would like it. So he's kind of standing on it. His cake's resting on it like that. Then I'm going to take another dimensional and I'm going to kind of tuck it underneath the circle and the sentiment. I might even use my take your pick tool have to get it all the way in there. Slide that under. So it's going to hold that corner of the circle up and hold our birthday sentiment up. All right, and there we go. And then our final thing for this card is to add some dots. So we're gonna grab our in color dots again. This time I am going to use the copper clay and so again, I'm just going to kind of slide them off to the side before I pick up. Um, oh, come on. Oh, this one does not want to lift up. All right. Okay. Let's see. Now that I've kind of slid them out of the way, can I pick them up? No. No, no, man. Okay, we're going to bring them right out to the edge. Slide them right off the side. There we go. guys are being really tricky today. And there we have our dots on our card to finish up our second card. So just a really cute one and in person you can really see that embossing. So that's really nice. All right. 
And now our final card, I think is my favorite because it has my favorite in color in it. It is mostly Moody Mauve. So there we go. Um, so the pieces that you get in here have been die cut again with uh, the Radiating Stitches does. Um, and then check it out. We've been using Sweet Sorbet kind of as an accent for some of the bits on our rooster. Um, last year when we got our in colors, we got our metallic ribbons. And this is the Sweet Sorbet metallic ribbon. And I was a little shocked because it did not match the red of the Sweet Sorbet at all. It's a beautiful ribbon, but it didn't match. But this year... It's a perfect match to our Moody Mauve. So I'm super excited because this is still current product. They carried over our metallic ribbons. So the Sweet Sorbet metallic ribbon is a perfect match to your Moody Mauve. So there you go. It didn't match up with the Sweet Sorbet like they had wanted, but it is perfect for this year's in colors. Um, super happy about that. All right. So to start with, I'm going to take our piece of basic white and I'm going to get it out of the way by gluing it to oh that just went really out of focus there we go I'm going to glue this to the inside of our pebbled path card base now if you're gluing this in first like I am now you're going to have to be very aware of what the front and the back of the card are um because when we go and glue all of our bits on you want to be gluing them onto the front of your card not the back of this so there we have our pebbled path card base. Um, I'm going to set that off to the side. I'm also going to move this out of the way for now. So I have lots of room to stamp because my first job is to stamp this whole Moody Mauve piece with my birthday cake. So I am going to grab my Simply Shammy and clean this up because that has black ink on it. Now you've got some choices here. Um, if you've got Moody Moth, go ahead and stamp with Moody Moth. If you do not, hopefully you have some Versamark on hand. Um, really handy stuff. You can stamp in Versamark. Here, I'll just show you one. Um, so you can stamp in Versamark, and as it dries, it will actually darken. Or you can stamp in Moody Mauve, and it will be quite a bit darker, but as it dries, it actually will lighten. <laughs> um, so let me bring that up a little bit closer. So both are going to create that cupcake look on the back. The Versamark on the left will darken as it dries. The Moody Mauve ink on the right will lighten as it draws, dries. And this one was created with Moody Mauve. So you can see it did get quite a bit lighter here if we actually put these kind of side by side. So it did lighten up significantly as it dried. Um, and yeah, so I am going to use Moody Moth because I have it. And why not? Actually, I can keep going on this side because that's all going to get covered up anyways with our DSP. So basically what I'm going to do is take my Moody Moth, take my little cupcake or cake, I guess it's a full size cake, and I am going to stamp random cakes all over this piece of paper. Okay, even where I know that they're going to be hidden, I don't care. I'm not gonna tr waste my time trying to figure out where they will and won't be shown. And so I am trying to, you know, kind of offset them. Um, so it's not just like straight lines of cakes take some of the pressure out of stamping straight as well. Um, so I've just put cakes all over this card front. Um, it's fun. And actually, while we've got this, why not? I haven't decorated any of my envelopes yet. Let's just give this one a little Moody Moth cake on the front. In fact, all of them, you could probably just go ahead and throw a little uh, colored coordinated cake on the front of your envelope. And voila, you've got some cute cute decorations and we could put one on the inside of our card as well. Actually, that's a good idea. I'm going to do it right now while I think of it. Um, so a little cake. In fact, let's do an entire little row of cakes. Oops. 
There we go. A whole row of cakes across the bottom. Oh my goodness, that went really fuzzy on you. Sorry, guys. Oh, why does it keep doing that? So weird. Okay. Let's try to get my hands in here. It seems to stay focused when my hands are in the picture. All right. So with that done, we're going to put that off to the side. We're going to take this and you've got a piece of designer series paper. We are actually going to glue this down right across the center of our cardstock piece. So again, I do like to use my liquid glue for this, but use what you like. Um, and you can decide, do you want the dashes or do you want the hearts? You know, make this, make this your own. Um, you'll have enough stuff to make two of these, so you could actually do one with dashes and one with hearts. All right, so we glue that right across the center. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to take that piece of Sweet Sorbet Metallic Ribbon and tie a bow. So I'm going to kind of keep it off to the left-hand side right around the base of that DSP. Again, tie a knot first. Oh my goodness. All thumbs this morning. There we go. It doesn't matter where we tie our knot to start with, so I'm just trying to make my two ends equal. So tie your knot, and then you can shuffle it over to where you want it. And we're going to tie a little bow. So two bunny ears. Wrap them around and we're good to go. Now, with that done, you can be brave and hope that you've got everything where you want it and glue this straight to your card front. Or you can wait to glue it so that you can shuffle it some more. Um, I am just going to kind of say, okay, that if I center that, that bow's far enough off to the side, that's perfect. I am going to trim the edges, or not the edges, the ends of my ribbon. And then I am going to glue this straight to the front of my pebbled path card, just like that. Um, so let's grab some liquid glue. I'm all about getting the pieces attached to the card because the more pieces I get attached to the card, the less pieces I can lose. <laughs> My desk is not that bad actually right now, but it's bad enough that I put something down and then I can't find it. Okay. So, do that. Okay. So we've got that piece all done. Now we're going to do some stamping. Um, so we actually have three pieces here to stamp and I can put away my glue. We don't need that anymore. Um, so three things to stamp here. We're going to start with, and they're all stamped in basic black. So we've got that basic black put that somewhere good. All right, I'm going to start with my happy, or it's your birthday, sorry. And I'm putting this right onto this radiating stitches circle. So it fits just perfectly on there. Set that off to the side. On this one, I am going to, I love this guy. He's my favorite, my little guy here in his boxers. I'm gonna stamp him in his boxers on the scrap paper. And then we are going to grab the skateboard. Now, before I stamp my skateboard though, I'm gonna kind of sit this guy beside and go, okay, where does he have to be so that his head will stay on this piece? So I've just set him down beside and I'm gonna grab the skateboard and put it about where I think it should be so that he can stand on it and his head won't go off the top of the card. Okay, so. You could like actually color him up, cut him out, and then put him on to the card front to help you with that. The trick here is, is I don't want to just go putting my skateboard really low on here because I want space to overlap my circle in the corner um, without covering up the skateboard. So that was kind of 
the balance, the trade-off is like, we got to place it so that it's high enough. The circle can go there, but low enough that his head's not going to pop off the top. All right. Now we get to color. So let's move those out of the way. Um, and I'm going to start with my light boho blue and I'm going to color the top of my skateboard only. And of course, as I've done on the other cards, and you guys can change this up. I just, I kind of ran with the blue hair. Um, we're going to color his tail feathers. I just liked it for the three cards side by side to have that continuity and um, have it all kind of looking matchy matchy because I knew you'd be seeing all three cards together. All right, so let's get some highlights in here. Highlights. And so this is where, as you're doing these highlights, if you've kind of gone out of the lines and all that, you can make it look purposeful and all good. Okay, there we go. Oh, and sorry, with your dark boho blue, you're also going to do the edge of the skateboard. So it kind of gives the skateboard a little bit of depth. Um, now we're going to take our dark pebbled path and color in the skateboard wheels. I'm going to take the light pebbled path and some of you may not be comfortable with this, but we're going to create a shadow on the ground underneath our skateboard. And so you're just doing a little scribble just so that the skateboard's not going to be floating. Okay. If you don't want to do that, don't just, yeah, it's not the end of the world. All right. We're going to give our legs a little bit of pebbled, light pebbled path as well. We're going to do our body with a little bit of light pebbled path and those eyelids and the face. So again, you can use whatever color you want here. If you really like the copper clay body, go ahead and do that. I just thought because our background is pebbled path, we'd kind of keep that continuity going and pull in the pebbled path for our body as well. Okay. And I'm actually going to give them darker eyelids. There we go. All right. And then finally, we get to color in his shorts. Now, when I color in his shorts, I'm not coloring his polka dots. His polka dots are going to stay white. So I'm coloring around the dots. So you want a very light touch so that you don't accidentally um, have color bleed into those circles. There we go. And, oh, actually on this one, I did not bring any sweet sorbet in. I actually used my Moody Moth to do his little, I used to know what those things are called. The little red things that hang down off his face. Uh -huh. Can't remember now. All right, and then I'm using my light wild wheat for his beak and his legs again. All right. There we go. Okie dokie. So that is all done. Now we get to die cut him. So I'm going to put those pieces off to the side. We're going to get our little machine here. Make sure you guys aren't going to sleep on me. There we go. All right. Put him in. Oh, no. I put down the dies now, didn't I? Oh, there they are. Okay, good. <laughs> all right. Um. Line that up. There we go. Line that up. Pop this on and die cut him. Now again, you could totally fussy cut him. Not the end of the world. Just way more time consuming. <laughs> All right. And I love this because it does actually cut out the two little bits in his tail which is one thing that when I'm fussy cutting, I certainly am not talented enough to do with scissors. I would need an X-Acto knife to do that. Um, all right. Oh, I 
lost a wild wheat. There we go. Bring that back. So with him, die cut. The comb. Yes, thank you. Um, so with him die cut, I'm going to pop him on here with dimensionals. Um, there we go. And there we go. All right. And I'm going to stand him on the skateboard. Just like that. And now we can put some more dimensionals on the back here. I'm going to do all the corners and let's see when this sits i'll put them slightly above center another set just above center so that they don't hit the um the metallic ribbon all right here we go take this pick up that ribbon so we go underneath now i am trying to center this but i'm not yeah, I'm not the best at centering things, so, you know, we'll do the best we can. So center that, get this ribbon out of the way. He's being a little stubborn, there we go. That piece can go on top, but the other one needs to stay out of the way. Actually, maybe I'll just trim it more. Yeah, I'm just going to trim it more. Uh -huh. There we go. Oh, come on. And so with that done, this guy's going to go on with a dimensional. So I'm actually going to pop a dimensional onto my card front right here in the corner. And then one off to the side on my circle. And just like that. Trying to make sure my board birthday um, lays straight. There we go. And then we just have to decorate with our in color dots again. So again, I've used the in colors, but this time I'm using Moody Mauve to coordinate with my background. Oh, these ones are coming off a bit more nicely than the copper clay ones did. Not entirely. Hmm. There we go. Yeah, really, as long as you make sure to do the little slide, we're all good. All right. And there you have our third card from this set. Oh, thanks, Louisa. Um, right, the comb and the waddle. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I used to know these words. Um, all right, so I'm going to bring in all of our cards again. Um, all three that we've created today using our in color blends and hey chuck um, bundle they are so funny oh my goodness so there we have all three of our cards let's see if i can get that onto the screen for you um in our in colors and they are just really um fun quirky sassy little roosters here um Oh, and there's a real name for the tail feathers too, not just tail feathers. Oh, interesting. Um, <laughs> all the things that we can't keep in our brains. I knew, you know, I've known these things over the years, but they're kind of gone. All right. So this is this week's weekly card class to go. Um, thanks so much, Gail. With a $60 order, you actually get enough to make two of each of these, as well as a printable PDF that has the link to this video so you can rewatch it as you craft. Um, and for $70, you actually get a pack of these in color dots. Now, these in color dots, guys, I have a bunch coming because I'm a little bit obsessed, but they are on low inventory. So um, you definitely want to place your order soon if you want to get your hands on those. Um, I know the boho blue is so beautiful. Um, it's such a gorgeous color. I'm so glad I also have the little mini stamp and cut and emboss machine in that color. It sits over on my main table and um, I love it. Um, now I wanted to remind everybody as well, I have one other class coming up, um, online class that is. I have an in-person class on June 10th if you live near me and want to join. Um, it's just my week, my monthly card, coffee and cards. Um, but I have one more online class coming up and it's a big one, guys. It's a stamp camp. 
Um, it features the Darling Details Bundle, and this is actually last week's card class to go um, that doesn't use the DSP. Our Stamp Camp is completely different cards featuring the Bright and Beautiful DSP and the Darling Details Bundle. I just wanted to show you these cards, though, so you could see what the images looked like and the gorgeous dyes, how they work, um, and like the little scalloped edge and everything. So basically, if you buy the Darling Details Bundle and the DSP, using my host code, um, then you get the Stamp Camp cards for free, 14 cards. It's two full days of stamping with myself and six other demonstrators. And it is an unreal day. If you've ever done one of our Stamp Camps, they are fantastic. And like, they just, they really are. The six other people I work with are so talented. Um, so that's coming up. Today's actually the last day to register. So you can find that link for that on my link tree or you can just message me personally and we'll get it all sorted out if you already own the darling details bundle we also have an option um i believe it's 65 dollars um you get the dsp still as well as the make and takes and the online videos and the pdf and everything you just won't get the darling details bundle um yeah so and that's um that for that one you would just um pay me directly instead of placing an order um so that is coming up that so the deadline for that is today um so i don't want you to miss out on that if you've done one of our stamp camps and enjoy them or if you've never done one i would like to check it out um uh, so yeah that's about it i've got those two classes going on right now and again if you are local to me i offer a monthly coffee and cards class a second saturday of each month and actually we're getting to be quite a big group so i'm considering starting a second day so if you are local and can't make saturdays um message me and let me know when you can join us and maybe that'll be when i schedule our second um coffee and cards all right thanks so much for watching and um, have a wonderful week i will be back again next wednesday and i'm not in entirely sure but i think i'm going to be um featuring enjoy the rhythm so that's that awesome um electric guitar and drum set and everything okay have a great week everyone bye